Good morning, everyone. Uh, Al Delvecchio here for Farm and Family Missions Church. Uh, I am coming to you back from my office. As you can see, I still haven't finished my remodel. Still got uh, paint. But um, I'm back from Key West. I got back uh, two days ago. Um, I was in quarantine for <laughs> more, more than half my time there because I had exposure to someone with COVID, but uh, ended up not getting it, tested negative, and uh, they let me take a jet home last Thursday. So it took us two days to get home. So it's great to be home. Um, it's great to be able to be back in my office and with my family and um, my daughters. Uh, they're, they had a, a bucket list of things they wanted to do when I got back. So number one, they said, we have you have to grill us your special hamburgers and ice cream so we had we had Traeger grilled hamburgers and uh and ice cream that first night we got back and then the next day I had to build I had to uh make them an awesome breakfast so we had waffles with honey inside infused in the batter and then uh yeah chocolate chips in the waffles and blueberries and syrup and then we did omelets, farm fresh omelets. So we got nine eggs yesterday, one from the chickens and cooked them all up and made omelets for everybody. Um, and then we did bacon and orange juice and coffee, you name it, it was awesome. So anyway, um, good to be back with the family. Today I want to encourage you out of Acts chapter four. Uh, this was supposed to be my reading on Friday, but uh, I was I had to get up early that day in Denver and fly a jet home the rest of the way. So. Um, we are finishing up Acts chapter four. Uh, that was the 345 reading for Friday, which I actually just did this morning. And it's so awesome that I want to encourage you in it, um, because it's got a lot of awesome truth in it. So let's dive in. Um, remember what I do is 345. If you want to figure that, figure out how to do that, it's 345, 345mytime.com. And it's this awesome reading plan, five days a week, Monday through Friday. You just read one chapter of the New Testament, whatever it says to read, right? And you do that, you'll read the whole New Testament every year. Um, and then I go through um, the uh, Disciples Journal or the Impact Guide, same thing. You get the Impact Guide on Amazon by Timothy Moore for $7. And you go through Truth and Promises. You write down any truth or any promises. Adjustments or assignments, okay? So you ask Holy Spirit, do you have anything I need to adjust in my life because of what I read? Or are there any assignments that you have for me? Um, support and encouragement, right? So you want to give, um, ask the Lord, do I, you know, can I support anybody? Or what kind of support or encouragement do I need? Who do I need to reach out to to resolve whatever um, you've highlighted for me, Lord? And then you pray, right? And you have a prayer. And so um, Acts 4 is just such an awesome chapter um it's about boldness it's about courage it's about the holy spirit indwelling us and and giving us uh the power to do exactly what god is calling us to do and then it's about um who we are as christians and how we're to act and uh so let's show, just jump right into it peter and john in chapter three have just healed uh a man that was 40 years old and um he was lame from birth. So he spent 40 years as a cripple and he begged, right, to get his, that's how he got his money, right? People, his friends brought him to the, the temple gate and people gave him alms as they came in. And they said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And he grabbed his arm and he helped him up. And then Immediately, he was healed, and the guy started jumping around and praising Jesus that he was healed. And this miracle opened the door for them to speak to 2,000 more people at Solomon's Portico, and they boldly spoke, okay? And the chief priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees all came on them, and they were pissed off because they here's this name of Jesus being spoken again. We thought we got rid of that guy, right? And so they arrested him. It says, greatly annoyed because they were teaching and the, the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And then they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. 
But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of men came to about 5,000. So previously, 3,000 had come to the Lord. I think what this means is they added to that number, and there was another 2,000 more that had just come to the Lord through what had just happened, through the preaching that he had done in, in Acts chapter 3, based on the crowd that gathered to see that this man had been healed miraculously by the power of Jesus Christ in Peter and John. So, the cool thing, here's the cool thing. It says, you had Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. You know who that is? Those are the same exact people that put Jesus Christ on trial and sent him to his death and then resurrection, right? But they had to go before the same people that convicted Jesus, all right? All right? And they say, by what power or by what name did you do this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we're being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you, to all people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. Okay? That's an awesome truth right there. And he said, This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under the heaven which there, there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must saved. Must be saved. Jesus is the only name that we can be saved by. If you're hearing this, that is a truth, okay? It's also a promise, all right? Think about that. That's an inconvenient truth for some who want to believe that there's always there's many ways to God. That is false, okay? There's one way to God, and it's through Jesus, all right? Jesus is the only way to God because God, Jesus is God, okay? It just He's God the Son. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. All the same God, three different expressions, okay? Um, but the word says that all things were created through Christ. So Christ created you, actually. Um, and God's plan from the beginning was to sacrifice his son as a perfect, unblemished lamb to pay for the sins of humanity. Because in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice unblemished animals, lambs, most of the time, to pay for the sin, their sins, and they did that yearly, okay? Well, Jesus was the sacrifice for all humanity for eternity. And that's the truth. It's, it's, if, you don't, if you're not there yet, it's an inconvenient truth, but it's the truth. And when you get there, it's an amazing truth because he has taken your burdens. He has taken your pain. He has taken your stress, everything. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, okay? Um, he loves you. He's for you, all right? You have so much freedom. You will have such a huge weight lifted off of you if you would just surrender your whole life to Jesus, all right? We should never, as Christians, ever incorporate Jesus into our life, okay? Have our things on the side, have this, have that. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to be a Christian so I can be so that I can get into heaven, but I'm just not gonna give all that to Jesus. And that is false, okay? As a Christian, we're called to be surrendered, okay? We know the great price that Jesus paid for us, which was his life, okay? That God, the Father, had to watch his son die on a cross, all right? But we... We're so blessed. We're so blessed by Christ. Okay. Slightly lost my thought, train of thought. Let me get right back here. All right, so we are, verse 13 here. All right. Now they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men. And they were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus, but seeing the man who was healed beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. 
All right, so Holy Spirit. So I was just getting at basically, you know, might be an inconvenient truth, okay, but it's the truth. And once you accept it, not only do you have peace, but you have you have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. That's what I was getting at. And now I'm, I'm back. Okay. So you have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. All right. And to give you boldness in these crazy situations where you're being accused on trial by all the officials of the time. And you have the boldness to stand up against them. And then your boldness shuts them up because... They see, they knew that these men had been with Jesus. Peter and John, they could tell that they had been with Jesus, but they know they are uneducated men. They're fishermen, right? They're, you know, they're not, they were ordinary men in society that were not of means, that did not have an education, for most of them, okay? And they saw the boldness and the intelligence with which they spoke, and they could not deny what happened. Everybody knew this man who had sat there for 40 years, who had walked by him for 40 years going into the temple and gave him, giving him alms. And they see this man healed. That no, they can't deny it. It shuts them up, okay? So the power of God will shut people up when they cannot deny it, okay? So just remember that if you allow God to speak through you, if you obey with boldness, God will do miracles, okay? In people's hearts and physical, okay? Physical miracles still happen today. It's awesome to see that Holy Spirit turns ordinary regular people into powerful men of God in the kingdom, right? And the world can say nothing against you. <clears throat> and the cool thing is, they, so they basically said, okay, we got to basically shut this, these guys up because they, they're they going to ruin our good name. Um, you know, they know what we did to Jesus and we can't let that happen. So they basically charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John, again, boldly said, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. So they're like, Sorry, dudes, I'm not going to listen to you. You're not my authority. My God is my authority. Um, finding no way to punish, punish them, they let them go because the people, because of the people, for all were praising God for what had happened. And, yeah, we talked about, so the end of this is, for the man on whom the sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. And they, they knew that this guy had been there for 40 years, okay? It would, there, if he had been, crippled for a year or two or three and then people see him healed they're like oh he got better right but there's no denying that this man was born a cripple and it but only by the power of god was he completely and fully healed he had never even walked in his whole life and he was jumping around running around praising jesus okay that's my god and then cool thing is when they were released Chat, verse 23, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, whom through the mouth of our father David, your servant said by the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place, i.e. the crucifixion of Christ, right? And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant your servants to continue to speak your word with boldness, with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with all the, with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. All right. So they just spoke with boldness. They shut up the, the rulers. Um, they had nothing that they could say against them. They released them. And what did they do? They immediately gathered together and prayed for more boldness. All right. They didn't rest in what just happened. They weren't looking behind them. They were looking forward. They said they knew that 
the people's hand was against them. They knew that they were that they were in this battle. They knew that God had given them the boldness, boldness to do that. And then they went and they prayed for more boldness because it wasn't enough. The Great Commission has not been yet fulfilled. Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Okay. And he told them to go to Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So. Oh, the promise here is grant your servants to continue to speak with boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. That happens today. Okay. I've seen it a few times personally where I, I was prompted by Holy Spirit to, to, to pray for somebody's complete healing. And then the next day I was amazed with a call out of the blue saying that they were completely healed. All right. God still performs signs and wonders to this day when we are yielded to his Holy Spirit, to his assignments, and we boldly obey because he will give us boldness if we pray for it. And the cool thing was the Holy Spirit shook the place where they were at, okay? They were completely, they were shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a little doctrine thing right here. There's some people that will tell you that you're, there's no, there's no extra filling, extra measure of the Holy Spirit. And this is a non-essential, okay, in the kingdom. But I personally believe you read the word of God and you can get an extra measure of Holy Spirit at times when you are being called to do something very great that requires boldness in the kingdom. Holy Spirit will give you an extra measure, okay, of boldness. Okay, they had already all been filled with the Holy Spirit. Pentecost already happened, okay? They, they were filled with the Spirit. They went and preached. You know, they had cloven tongues of fire. 3,000 came to the Lord that day, all right? But um, every time that there was something that was about to happen that was really big, there was a, an extra filling, an extra measure of the Holy Spirit, all right? They were all filled again with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so they already had the Holy Spirit, but they were given that extra measure to be bold. Um, and it says, and they continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So that's what we're called to as Christians, to boldly speak the word of God. And then lastly, who are we as Christians, okay? There is a great divide in the body of Christ, especially in America with 500 denominations. That's a made up number, but there's a lot, right? There's a lot of different denominations out there. Um, and there's a lot of infighting in the church and that's never how we're supposed to be. Okay. Listen to this. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had, but they had everything in common. Okay. So everything in common, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that they, they all thought exactly the same exact way and, um, you know, they all had the same hobbies. It means that every every possession of theirs, they did not see as their own. They knew that every good thing that they have was a gift from God. So when you see your possessions, your bank account, your house, your car, your family, whatever you have, everything, that's a blessing from the Lord, okay? And so we have, if we're given an extra measure of blessing, uh, use it. We're called to use it for God, for goodness in the kingdom of God. You have a lot of money. You want to see that that number continue to grow in your bank account, right? If you're being, if you have people that are that are that you're being convicted to help, right? In your heart, you're like, man, I feel like they need some. I need to help them, right? But the, there's a part of your flesh that's like, well, I don't want to give up this money that I've been saving for this extra thing in the future. Just remember your money comes from the Lord. If he calls you to bless somebody with the money that you have, he will, he has the power, okay, to refill your coffers, all right? Are you putting your, your money, your trust in your money? Are you putting your trust in what that money can buy you in the future? Or are you putting your trust in the Lord? Remember, every good thing we have is from the Lord. He gives and he takes away. So we need to, we need to know that we were bought at a price, okay? We were bought at a price. You are not your own. So if God calls you to help somebody, help them, okay? Obey, you'll be way more blessed in the process. 
and then God will refill your coffers as needed. He promises that we'll have everything that we need. So stop worrying, help others, bless them, give them out of the good, give to them out of the goodness of your own heart. And don't be afraid of losing what you've worked for because God blessed you with that to begin with and God will bless you again, okay? Verse 34. <clears throat> there was not a needy person among them for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles feet and it was distributed to each as any had need thus joseph who was called also called by the apostle barnabas which means son of encouragement a levite a native of cyprus sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles feet he's like look guys i used to own this huge field and i just realized i don't need this field it's just an extra thing i was holding on to that increased my wealth but it wasn't helping anybody and so he sold it. He said, here's the money. Let's bless people. All right. Now, I'm not telling you to empty your bank accounts right now, guys. I'm just saying, be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. If he calls you to do something, do it. Whether that's being generous or whether that's stepping out in faith and being bold, playing the fool for Christ. Okay. As a Christian, you're going to get laughed at. You're going to get ridiculed. You're going to get name called. Okay. You're going to be called crazy. Okay. Society right now calls Christians bigots and um, some of them calls Christian terrorists. Some of the far left wingers are calling Christians terrorists, which it makes zero sense, okay? Everything's upside down in the world today. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. Worry about your relationship with Christ. God will, God will give, you, give you everything that you need. That doesn't necessarily mean he's gonna make you rich, okay? We're all called to different things in the kingdom that we can rest in, in Christ. God has you in the palm of his hand. He has a perfect plan for your life. He loves you. He's for you. He wants you to trust him with every single inch, every ounce of your being, okay, with everything that you have. Remember that he gave it to you to begin with. Have joy in that and take joy in blessing other people because that's what it's really all about. We're called to love one another as Christ, Christ loved us. So let's love one another. Um, that is what our church, Farmer Family Missions Church, is founded upon, okay, is the Word of God, which calls us to bless others in need. Um, and so missions is a, is a huge part of what we're called to because of that great commission. Um, so we want to bless people in our community, um, and we want to bless people across the world. Uh, so we're going to go live with our website, website very soon. We're going to go live with our Facebook page very soon. And... We're going to um, start meeting. We're already meeting a very small group right now every week um, as we launch and get this thing going. But um, be on the lookout. We're going to start. We're going to have a community day in the next month or so here where we get a bunch of people together um, and we just bless somebody in the community. We bless somebody that has land or, or that's a farmer or has acreage and, and can't take care of it themselves. And so one of our cool ideas is we're just going to get a bunch of people together for free and ask nothing in return. And we're gonna go just do a whole day of work that, somebody's, that somebody really needs and bless them with something they, they could never have done themselves. And what we're doing is we're gonna earn the ask. We're, they're gonna say, why are you doing this for me? Well, we're doing it because we love you. And we're doing it because Jesus calls us to love our neighbors, we love ourselves. It's gonna be an open door to speak love and life and the gospel into our community, which they desperately need. I love you guys. This was a lot longer than I thought it would be, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to go get my family ready and head to church as well this Sunday. And um, yeah, uh, just know that I love you. I'm praying for, specifically, if you ask me, I will pray for you by name. But I'm, I'm praying in general for, for all those that will believe through this video. Um, for all those that will be a part of this church in the next uh, couple of years. All right, God bless you. Um, have an awesome Sunday, and um, we'll see you soon.